We all have stories to share. Mine is about embracing, harnessing the power of resilience to bounce back, to live a new life, to find hope and strength in the fact that, hey, what doesn't break you, make you. You can allow it to break you or you can allow it to break, to, to make you and to remake you and to remold you. You can reframe your experiences, not seeing the glass as half empty, but half full. You can reframe your trauma and tragedy and uh, loss, seeing it as, okay, this has happened. Where do I go from here? What, what does resilience mean to you? Thank you, Darko, and thank you once again to the Motivate community for partnering with us this year. I'm Jennifer Richards-Wilson. I'm the founder and CEO of Activate Core, and I am, uh, along with my team, we are the, 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 the organizers of this year's virtual book tour. A virtual book tour is a concept that was developed during the pandemic when authors weren't able to travel physically to promote and sell their books. So they took to the virtual spaces. After I wrote my second book, um, I, I read about it and it, it the, 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 the entire idea intrigued me. And so I, I got my ladies together and we launched our first book tour last year in June with 13 authors. The entire experience was just phenomenal and this year we decided um, to do it again and this year we have 30 authors from nine countries different genres traveling through the virtual spaces of youtube instagram wechat whatsapp all of those spaces doing radio interviews podcasts webinars meet and greet and so much more and today we have one of our phenomenal authors. She's an academic author. She's also a school leader and truly an inspiration to many, many young persons who are going to out into becoming authors and entrepreneurs and leaders in their own right. So thanks again, Darko, and thanks again, um, Adrian and the Motivate community for inviting us to share our books and our stories with you today. So on the virtual book tour, we have 30 authors, as mentioned before, and many of these authors are from the US, UK, Australia, Jamaica, China, Israel, South Africa, Chile. And these authors come from different genres, such as the academic, um, spiritual authors, inspirational authors. We have poets, we have um, adventure writers, we have romance writers, <laughs> different genres. So our authors are really phenomenal. Their books can be found on Amazon and other platforms. And we have been sharing stories to transform our world because we believe in the power of stories to transform worlds. And the motto of uh, um, this community has helped me in so many ways to share my story, to know who I am, to, to embrace my identity, to see things differently. I am an NLP practitioner and Dark is one of my mentors. And the tools Thank that you. I have been learning in this community have helped to uh, redirect my path. They have helped me to develop resilience and adaptability and a new mindset in terms of where I want to go and what I want to do. Today, I am a global leader, a visionary leader, impacting communities in China, in Jamaica, in the US, in Canada, um, in Australia, and um, Jamaica, the UK, and other parts of the world. Simply because I embraced my identity and I saw resilience as being a tool that could prepare me 
for for my next yes so again i'm jennifer richards wilson and i am the founder of activate core i am a visionary leader and my topic is resilience building resilience harnessing inner strength for success Resilience to me is a, a very loaded word because I, I believe I have a strong adaptability um, quotient, adversity quotient. And I'll tell you my story in a few minutes, but let me just continue. I'm also, uh, um, I'm an ICF transformation coach and I also um, mentor and train individuals in different aspects of their lives. So here's a little bit about me. I have certifications in psychology, CBT counseling, and essential oils therapy. My current projects include the whole conference for women in business, Jamaica edition. And we had that last night. It was amazing. We were able to inform and educate and support, empower and motivate women who want to embark in entrepreneurial endeavors, women who are building their businesses or need support in sustaining their businesses. We had a, 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 a dynamic array of women who, who were able to share their stories and impact people, people's lives. Of course, my virtual book tour, and then I have the Forgiveness, Embracing Forgiveness coaching program, which I'll be talking about today, along with my resilience online training program. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wonderful. So this is a this is a quote that I found very, very um intriguing from Eleanor Roosevelt. She says, We gain strength and courage and confidence by each experience in which we really stop to look fair in the face. We must do that which we think we cannot. And we have all been there. We have been at, at the point where we think, where we thought that I can't go through this. This is going to, this is too much. But then we have to dig a little deeper and we have to find the strength to bounce back. And that is what resilience really is. It's bouncing back from adversity, bouncing back from trauma, bouncing back from tragic occurrences. And nobody has escaped these occurrences unless you don't live on planet Earth or unless you are not really living at all. Because once you uh, in, endeavor to venture out into your own world and embrace your identity, you're going to face challenges, adversity, and situations in which you will have to pull from your inner resources. So let me share a little bit of my story because again, this is about sharing our stories to impact our world. About 13 years ago, I found myself sitting on the, the floor of my living room. He had come and he had emptied the house. He had come and it, with, with, with a moving truck and he proceeded to move every single piece of furniture, appliance, utensil out of our house. And as I sat there on my living room floor, I started to plan my own suicide. I wanted to take my own life. This was not the life that I envisioned that I would be living. And as my son, my son at, at that time was about two years old, he was in the bedroom and it was then that it dawned on me that my life had shattered around me. I had nothing left. I was humiliated, ostracized, abused in so many ways. And as I sat on my living room floor, because there's nowhere else to sit, I planned my suicide. You see, I grew up in a traditional family. I did all that I was supposed to do. I was in the church. I did... I had my career, got married, had a child, had the wide picket fence and all that I could do as I was dictated by society um, to do. But then um, when my marriage fell apart, I lost 
or I didn't even know who I was. And grief, I felt grief and loss at the tragedy of my life. The, the humiliation that I was facing from my community, from my church, from my family, from so many areas in my life just became nothing. And I looked at the glass. My life was just like glass, shattered glass around me. And I looked at my empty house, the house that we had bought together and had planned our life together. And we were determined to, yes, this is it. And we are going to build a life and live until we're old and gray. And yet, after coming from a, a church camp, which I served as a, as a mentor and a coach, he told me that I had to get an HIV test done. He had exposed me to an incurable disease. And... um. It wasn't just that he cheated. It was just that he exposed me to a disease, knowing that there's no cure for that disease. We, we tried therapy and counseling. It didn't work. And I told him to leave because he decided to continue his relationship. And I was not going to leave live in a facade as people wanted me to live. person said, why would you do that? It's normal. It's a norm. Men cheat all the time. And it's okay. You're going you're gonna to rebuild. You're going to be happy. But that wasn't what I wanted. It's not supposed to happen to me. I could not accept his infidelity and I could not accept that he exposed me to AIDS, HIV. And so I told him to leave. And that's where I started my story. He came with a moving van and he moved everything out of the house. He left us with nothing, not a chair, not a fork, no curtains, no bed, no nothing as a retaliation for me telling telling him to leave because I was not going to live that life. I was not going to allow my son to grow up in this kind of environment. So as I sat, sat on my living room floor, empty house, there was a knife. Imagine a knife being left over, you know. He took everything, and but, the, but there's a knife there. And I decided that that I was going to end my life. I was, I was This was not who I envisioned me to be. And it was then that I had to dig really, really deep. And it was then that I really found that Jesus Christ really saves because he stepped in the room and he saved and transformed my life. 2019, I transitioned to China. And that is when my entire life really began. Divorce to some persons may seem as if it's the end of your whole life and it, in yes yes it can be the end of a chapter of your life but then it can also mean the beginning of an entirely new book and that's what happened to me during the pandemic I wrote and published my first book my father's heart after that I went into I did my MBA through the MBA, I was exposed to executive coaching and, and NLP, and that's when I met Adrian. And I became a part of, part of this community about four years ago. I've been in the community for a long time. Adrian and others have been my mentor and motivating um, factors in my life, and they have taught me so much. And, and I've been using the tools that I've been learning in NLP to reframe what happened to me and to see the glass half full rather than half empty. I launched, I published my second book, my grief journal, and other books. I have now written and published four books. I'm, a, I'm an ICF certified transformation coach. I coach women who are transitioning through, through divorce, uh, parenthood, career changes, loss, grief, because I have been there. And I this is my story, and I share the story with them. We share the common bond of abuse, of humiliation, of grief. And so I can relate to those women. We have all been rejected. And sometimes it seems as if we will never recover from it, from this, from, from the trauma. But then there is hope. Mm -hmm. And going back to 
my quote, we gain strength and courage and confidence by each experience in which we really stop to look fair in the face. Because fear can have a, a gripping factor on us to say, you can't do this. This is the end of it. But then we must do that which we think we cannot. And I didn't think I could recover from my divorce, from being humiliated and rejected. But here I am, five years later, I wear several hats. I, I, I manage and I lead a group of women traversing through nine countries, doing a virtual book tour, transforming lives and impacting and inspiring women and men on a global level. And the CEO of Activate Core, which is the home of the Transforming Lives Coaching Center, the Full Circle Hope Ministries, the Transform Leadership Foundation, and so much more. I'm a blogger and a podcaster as well, and so much more mentor and trainer. This is what my life has become. This is what resilience really mean to me. But now I want to hear, you have heard my story. We all have stories to share. Mine is about embracing, harnessing the power of resilience to bounce back to live a new life, to find hope and strength in the fact that, hey, what doesn't break you, make you. You can allow it to break you or you can allow it to break, to, to make you and to remake you and to remold you. You can reframe your experiences, not seeing the glass as half empty, but half full. You can reframe your trauma and tragedy and uh, loss Seeing it as, okay, this has happened. Where do I go from here? What, what does resilience mean to you? I would like to hear your responses in the chat, or you can open your microphones if you can, and your cameras, and you can share your definition of resilience. And do you think you are a resilient person? How have you used your pain to become stronger? I welcome your input at this time. Go ahead. Anyone wants to share? The floor is not open. Um, I can share. Um, I'm reconnecting now, but... I remember the first time I heard that word, actually a teacher used it to describe me, <laughs> in fact. So I was pretty young. I think I was probably still in high school. So, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah, so a teacher used the word to describe me. And then I went to discover, learn about the word by, by myself. And I think I represent resilience because one of the things I always do is make sure that I'm able to bounce back. I use this word, a, a phrase a lot, that I fail forward. So no matter what the situation or circumstance is, um, I I will fail. Failure is a part of navigating life, but I've yes. always had that ability within myself to fail forward or pivot towards success. Yes. I think that's what resilience means to me, meaning that um, it's okay to struggle. It's okay to have a difficult time, but don't, you can sit with that time, you know, because that's important that you process failure and acknowledge that this has happened, but yes. it's not, yes. you, you must continue because you, you, you you owe this not only to yourself but but to your community to to continue so that you can give your gifts much like you have described. Um, something unfortunate has happened. You sit with the 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 circumstance. You process it, but then the world is re relying on you to show up. Yes, and share with them. Mm -hmm. Yes, my son was relying on me to show up. Yes. He kept me alive, really. I knew I had to live for him. And today he's in a middle school in China and he's learning multiple languages and he's doing, he's doing so well. And, you know, years ago, I didn't think he would remember us sitting on the floor and eating dinner because we had nowhere to sit. We had nothing in the house. <laughs> 
And he said to me, mommy, well, he was jumping on the couch, a new couch that I had bought. And I said, Joel, don't, don't jump on the couch, you know, whatever. And he was saying, mom, I remember the day we had, we were, we sat on the floor and we ate because we had nowhere to sit. And that just brought tears to my eyes. I didn't think he would remember. He was, he was just so young, but he remembered. And um, fast forward here now, we're in China living and he's doing so well. And I'm just so proud of him. But I knew that I had to live for him. And I, I put the knife down <laughs> and I decided to live. Not just to live, but I decided to thrive because there's a difference between living and thriving. You can live day by day and not do anything with your life and just stay static and exist. But I didn't want to just exist. I wanted to live and thrive and flourish. And today, I believe I am doing just that as the CEO of Activate Core. And here are just some facets of resilience. Physical resilience, emotional resilience, relational resilience, mental resilience, spiritual resilience. And we can be here for an entire afternoon just going through one section of this. So looking at the entire um, sphere of resilience, bouncing back, adaptability. One thing we know that the only constant item we have in our life is change. We can choose to change. Or we can choose to remain the same. We can choose to harness what is what, what has happened to us and rebuild, reframe it, and use it um, to support us and to lead us into new chapters in our life. I would like to introduce you to an exercise at this time. Can you see it? If you have a notebook or pen, you can... Um, I can walk you through this at this time. It's a tool called, called Closed Doors, Doors Open, Doors Closed, Doors Open Resilience Exercise. And you're going to be thinking about a time in your life when you were rejected or you uh, plan collapsed or you faced loss or uh, job loss, you lost a, a, a loved one. You lost a dream, a door closed in your life. For me, it was my divorce. It was my divorce. That door closed for me. Think about a door that closed in your life. Just take a few minutes, two minutes to do that. A significant door that closed in your life at one point in your life. The door that closed on me was, what was that door? You are free to type it to, to type it in the chat if you can, or in your notes as well. That door closed. The door that closed on me was, for me, it was my divorce. But then a new door opened for me. A new door opened for me. After that door closed, the new door that opened for me was what door opened for you and transformed your life? Feel free to unmute yourself and share if you so desire. Would anyone like to share? Linda. <laughs> yes, I remember your talk last week. Wonderful. <laughs> okay, so can you hear me? Yes, I can. We can. Okay, so probably will be the door that I closed was um, 
I think like a six years ago that I moved to Spain and I was super successful in what I was doing in that moment. But then after COVID, my career absolutely changed, like absolutely. Mm. And I lost everything and I was having to pay a ton of crazy amount of money because the company of my family and everything. Mm. Uh, No work, no documents, like uh, no nothing, nothing. Mm. and yeah I think I think the life just opened in a different way when I start to do what I have to do so I just start to study and open new new doors that I I think I was always knocking those doors yes. so I have been living in India for a long time like a, I don't know 10 years ago and there yes. was just like a, everything have is connected right now like a Mm-hmm. I need to close miss like I lost every single part of of my career to restart to build this part of me. And I yes. would just put it in the side. So yeah. I think career change. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. My pleasure. Thank you. Anyone else want to share? Yeah. Jennifer, I'd, I'd like to just uh, to say, I, I think, you know, being Go one ahead. of the uh, pr- probably the oldest, is, can you hear me okay? We can. Uh, okay. Yeah, being one of the oldest people here, I've probably had more life events <laughs> than most happen. <Yeah. laughs> but um, starting, uh, I remember the first time I had to bounce back, you know, my wife walked out of me and I had two girls. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. um it changed very quickly because I saw opportunity in everything in my life. And that's like a positive attitude. And I discovered something now much later in life because that happened. I then went to university, studied part-time because I had to go into a different job and things flowed on. And then I was able to move. I started doing different work. I got a job in the government. Everything flowed on. Yes. It was like a, a, a Y path. Yes. So much later, when I did some uh, assessment of things using Briggs or whatever, um, there was a trait that was stood out. And for me, it goes hand in hand with resilience, and that's tenacity. Yes. yes. So I yes. think they both go together like a pair, right? Resilience allows one to think what the future can be. Tenacity allows you to just keep going and stick Great. at it. That's yes. where it makes success. So so to me, I love that they both go together. That That's my belief. So thank you for sharing my ability to share. Tenacity, grit. Um, yeah, that's... Adversity, caution. All of those go with resilience. Here are some questions that I would like you to reflect on. What led to the door closing? What helped you to open a new door? I will forward these to you upon your request um, so that you can really reflect on this. We'd have the time today because Sophia will, will be presenting in a few minutes. But I will be sending these to you again and um, so that you can really go through and look at resilience and what it really means to you and build that capacity to pivot, as Sophia mentioned, to look, to, to develop grit, tenacity, to look at as to look at adversity as something really good. A year ago, I did a presentation here about the order of chaos. I still believe that chaos is beautiful because chaos can lend itself, it it can allow you to really dig deeper and to see that chaos can can redirect you into a path that you really need to walk. Yes, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, Jennifer, Uh, can I say something? Yes, go ahead, Nadine. Okay, yes, I'm just saying um, it's, you know, sometimes they say synchronicity, but just this morning I was listening to a lady talk about how the things we go through, all these difficulties, when you have this break, it's actually a gift. 
Ah. See it as as a, as as you're given a gift to be able to start again. Yes. So if you see it in that way, and then she had a little acronym and she was saying gift. So first you need to grieve. You need to go through that process of grieving. Um, you get the, then look at the insights that you're getting from from the learnings. What do you get from it? And then forgive. And she was saying, you know, forgiveness is not for the person or the people in that situation, but for yourself so you can heal. And then don't see the situation in this way. Look for the truth of a situation because sometimes we make things bigger than it really is, you know. Yes. So yeah. see it as the gift. And I as I think, as I think everyone was saying things about what is um what is I think people have used the word gumption, tenacity, you know, different words. But I think that sometimes you need that jolt to be able to yes. find your purpose, to mm -hmm. find your purpose. So when you get that, you really have to look within, you start to learn, and then it brings you to your purpose. Thank you. And I love that acronym gift. Grieve. Grieve. Inside. Yes, forgive. forgive. And truth. truth. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And that leads me to my book. See, we're talking about all of this spirituality. And I have gone into um, aromatherapy as a way of dealing with um, forgiveness because I had to forgive him because it freed me. It wasn't about him. It was about me. To live a full life, I had to forgive him. Mahatma Gandhi said, the weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is an attribute of the strong. And this is this is my, my program. I'll be using this essential oil in a therapy session with, with clients to lead them through the path of forgiveness. Forgiveness is an attribute of those who have gone through the fire, for those who have had to rebuild their lives, for those who, who have had to forgive people who have hurt them, not because of, not for them, but for ourselves to live free. And so embarking on writing this book, I looked at my life, looked at what my ex-husband had done, and I had to tell my story because this book was about sharing stories because there's so many women out there there's so many persons out there who can't live a full life because they are facing unforgiveness they are they haven't forgiven themselves firstly and they can't forgive others and they are trapped in this life in which they really don't want to live but it seems as if they can't let go I want to guide people into letting go. And through my workbook and the use of this essential oil, I'll be able to do just that. So this is my resilience book. And at the same, let me share. No, not that video. Sorry. Let me share my video for my resilience book. Okay. Thank you so much. So in the chat, you have, you can always continue to share what resilience mean to you and how have you used this? How have you used this to reshape who you are? Let me just share my screen at this time. Go ahead. Okay. Welcome. This workbook is your guide to achieving freedom through forgiveness. It helps you acknowledge where you are, where you want to be, and choose freedom over captivity. Forgiveness means releasing resentment or anger. It's crucial for mental health, helping you move forward and elevating your mood, optimism, and overall well-being. The workbook guides you through phases of self-forgiveness and forgiving others. Based on Dr. Robert and Wright's model, each phase includes prompts for reflection and healing. Forgiveness helps reduce negative emotions, stress, and anxiety. Use this workbook to journal your thoughts and track your emotions as you move into wholeness. Remember, forgiveness is a journey, not a destination. Congratulations on choosing to forgive and find freedom.
Yes. So this is what I offer for women who are going through different transitions in their lives. You can contact me. I'm in the Motivate community. And I also have my own Hello Hope community in which I seek to offer hope. I build bridges to transform lives. I offer women um, a space that they can share their stories and they can rise and rebuild. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. And today we have one of our phenomenal authors. She's an academic author. She's also a school leader and truly an inspiration to many, many young persons who are going to turn out into becoming authors and entrepreneurs and leaders in their own right. So thanks again, Darko, and thanks again, um, Adrian and the Motivate community for inviting us to share our books and our stories with you today. Dr. Sophia, you can go ahead. So the purpose of my presentation, I want to talk about empowering students for career and educational success. So the presentation may not immediately resonate with you. Um, I'll share this bit about myself. I am a school principal and I work a lot with young people and they're always my target audience. But I do want you to follow along with me because I'm sure you know a teen or have a friend who has a teen or a child and they're wondering, what is this child going to do after high school? It's a hot topic that you have with your young people. And so if you hear anything, I want you to follow along so that you can make the recommendation and give the gift, um, but gift in a different way of career and educational success to the young people that you may know. So as I said before, I'm Sophia Morgan. I'm a school principal and my passion project is Explore Career Academy, where I work a lot with young people and also some adults who are looking to change career or further their education, talking about the career of their choice and also looking at educational programs that can help to, to propel them in those new careers that they are thinking about exploring. So my presentation, I've divided it into three segments. So first, I want to talk about empowering students for career and educational success. Um, one of my goals is to be able to give young people a, a, a blueprint as to what they're going to be doing after high school so that they can have a plan. Planning is critical to success, and that's one of the things that I'm passionate about in providing to young people. And then we want to talk about preparing them for their, their future. So we want to empower them. Sometimes I meet a young person, young, you know, maybe in grade 11 or 12, they're very empowered and they're very confident, but they're not very prepared. And so I want to be able to prepare them, let them know that there are going to be challenges, but how do you overcome those and continue on your path to success? Then I will talk about my book, The High Schooler's Guide to Career and College Planning, and also about Explore Career Academy. Again, let this be a conversation, so I will pop in, but if you want to pause me at any time to ask a question, please feel free to do so. If you want to share some insights in the chat, please feel free to do so. So first, want to talk about what do these words mean to you? So career and educational success. What, do, what does it mean to you? And thinking about yourself, do you think that you have found the right career, right? I ask this a lot to adults. Do you think that you are in the right career? And then reflect on younger you. If you could do anything differently, maybe choose a different career, would you choose a different career and why? So let's take about a minute to either unmute and share or text in the chat so we can hear what are your thoughts as you're navigating adulthood about career and educational success. Years ago, growing up in Jamaica, I didn't have much choice than going into teaching. It was one of the most stable careers around. I chose it because my parents wanted me to become a teacher. 
<laughs> I have been teaching for 22 years. Um, I don't think I would have chosen it as my lifelong career. Um, seeing not 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 that I'm in business and entrepreneurship. But um reconsidering where I'm at now, I would move more into counseling um or into social work as a as a career apart from being an educator. And Darko, you've chosen and used one of my favorite words, alignment. This is so important that everything aligns and for young persons or just individual in general, sometimes we we may have been finding success, meaning that we're making a lot of money, but the alignment, there's something missing. And so we may not have found alignment. So I, I like that you use that word. I will use it a lot um, as I share as we go forward. I see a comment in the group. So Jay shared that career success is me having the knowledge, skill, and qualification to get a new job, whether you want to change a job by force or by decision. But those key words are important. You have the knowledge, the skill, and the ability to be able to venture into a new career. And those are elements or components of success, whether in your career or educationally, we are able to find success by that. So here I've summarized um, career success, and there is no the definition. It's just one that I've chosen that I like. So, of course, it involves achieving personal and professional fulfillment. This is so important, especially when it comes to your career. If you think about yourself, you spend so much of your time at work or working on work. And so it is very important that you find a career that is able to give all of those components. You're able to achieve your goals. You are passionate about professional development. You are satisfied with this job. And of course, we cannot overlook financial stability. I always, when talking with young people, talk about the fact that your, your income, your salary, is the main tool for wealth creation. So we're not gonna gloss over the need that we need to be financially stable. We need to have those conversations with young people and let them know that yes, um, you may enjoy painting and that is good. It's a good skill, it's a good hobby, but can it provide for you and your family if you need to? And that's a tough conversation to have because we want persons to be able to be passionate about what they're doing, but we can't overlook the need for financial success. And educational success, I think Jay mentioned this a little in his response, talking about achieving those desired outcomes come to learning an academic pursuit. I'm an educator and a lover of learning. So if you invite me to do a degree today, I will be there because I love learning new things. So I, I love learning and I've always enjoyed learning. And I've always said that education is still the key to success and education as an, as educators, we always distinguish between education and schooling. Because schooling is, we go to school, we take our classes, but educational success is what is it that we're going to be doing with this newfound knowledge? And that's when you have um, progressed through actually being educated, when you are using the knowledge and the skills you've gained through schooling to really make a difference or to contribute to your community. So all of those things, when we are talking about young people, it's very important. And here's the word alignment. When we talk about educational and career success, education lays the foundation for career success. And so it's important that there is alignment there. So if you, if you would like to pursue a career in, in the medical field, then your educational goals are to align with that because the, your education is what's going to open the door for you to be able to venture into these careers. So whenever we're talking with young people, a lot of us were probably parents or we're educators, or you've met a young person somewhere. 
they will probably ask those questions of you, you know, what do you like about your job? Especially when they're probably in grade 11 or 12, depending on the high school program that they're in, they'll have those questions and you are part of their community and you are a resource that they can lean on to gain some insights about where do I go from here? What am I doing? Young people have those questions and we want to be able to give them a little bit of information to help to guide them. So alignment, this question, um, before I talk about alignment, if you remember your childhood, right? <clears throat> there are lots of times that you, an older person will see, what do you want to be when you grow up, right? Do you remember this question from your childhood? It's a popular question. Everybody asks you at different points or phrases. It's like an adult greeting. So what do you want to do when you grow up? And so if you reflect on your, your younger years, what you wanted to be when you were five probably evolved by the time you were 10, evolved by the time you were 15, and then you went into something totally different <laughs> when it was time to go to university. So, so I don't know if that has happened to you so far. I'll think maybe about myself of being an educator, much like I think a lot of us teachers who are just doing a great job in our field, we actually fell in love with education later. I'm one of those educators. So if you look at my training, there is some misalignment because although I went to teacher's college, I actually went to teacher's college because I was very young. And so my aunt, who is my own personal career and counselor, thought it was best to go to teacher's college. It's a secure job. So that's one conversation that we have a lot in Jamaica with our parents. You want to find a job that's secure. It doesn't get more secure than being an educator. And so that's how I ended up in that field. But we can see that our dreams and our goals for career, it evolves over time. So alignment is important. You want to make sure that your educational goals align with your career aspiration. And a lot of times what we find young people do when they're picking a career, or not just young people, but persons, you will pick a career. So you will say, I want to be an engineer. And then you try to force fit yourself into being an engineer. Instead, my recommendation is to look at yourself. Your career is about you. What are my personal skills? What are my passions? What are my competencies? And we start there, looking at ourselves, and then selecting a career that aligns with who you are and the gifts that you have, as opposed to picking a career. I've had a student in my office. Oh, Dr. Sophia, I want to be an engineer. Okay, great, Tom. Um, that's an excellent career. What are some of your favorite subjects? Well, I don't know what my favorite subjects are, but I do not like physics. I hate math. I do not want to do chemistry, but I want to be an engineer. These are not so you see that there's a misalignment there. So instead, I always pull my students back. And then I would say, okay, let's talk about you. What is it that you want to do? What are your personal skills? What are the things that you're passionate about? What are the things that you're good at? And then we will pick careers that align with that. And there are lots of tools available to help young people with this or persons in general. So first, start with a self-assessment. Your career is about who you are. You will spend several hours at work. And when you're not at work, you'll be working on work. That's what I do. So I spend several hours at school. And then I spend several hours at home thinking about school. What is it that I'm going to do with my students? Now, the great thing is I love my job. So it does not feel like I'm working. I, will, I sleep with a notebook. If you know me, I take notes a lot. So I sleep with a notebook because when I'm sleeping, I will come up with ideas for the school. And so I want to be able to wake up, write those ideas down before they go. My genius moment. And so if you are in a career that you enjoy, it does not feel like work.
it just feels like you're having fun. And so we want to be able to give that gift to young people and the persons in our community. So these are my top five picks for self-assessment. I love them because one, they're free resources. And a lot of persons are not aware that these resources are available for you to be able to use. And it is not, it doesn't have an age requirement. So if you're in the audience now, thinking about a career change, you can actually start here. Just spend some time, do your self-assessment and see, get to know yourself because we evolve depends on the experiences that we have. Maybe as you got older, you developed a skill that you probably didn't have before, but through life experience. So these are my top five picks. I want you to take two to three minutes to explore just one of these free resources. So I do not know if, I, if you are able to, let me copy and paste the links in the chat. So you can pick any one of these resources, open the URL, Go ahead and see what is it that's available for you to look at, how it is. It's as easy to, these are easy to use tools. That's why they're on my top five pick. I like things that are easy and really cater to persons who may not have someone to take them through step by step. But go ahead and click on any one of the links, browse around, and then unmute your microphone and tell me something that you may, you like about a tool such as this. And if as a young person, you would have enjoyed or benefited from having this self-assessment prior to choosing your career. These different tools, they're available. One of the reasons I, I love these as my top five is that they are comprehensive and they're also free. So they're not going to be at an additional cost. So we want to make sure that everyone is able to access regardless of their financial situation. So, um, yeah, we went through that. So one of the things that once you've had those conversations with your young people, it is very important that we help to empower them. So this is the first component and the first charge that I have for each of you that have maybe a niece, a nephew, a son, a daughter, any person in your life that you influence or have an impact on. These are the three ways that I suggest that you empower them as it relates to career and educational success. Ensure that they are setting goals. So a lot of young people sometimes, or not even young people, I do not know about you, but for me, I like taking notes and I write everything down. But when I need to make a goal that I know I want to stick to, right? I will think of different goals, but I, I say, okay, do I write this one down? Because somehow I believe that once I put it on paper, it's like a challenge to myself that I must pursue and I must follow this because it is written down on paper and it's just going to be there to stop me and say, Sophia, remember you wanted to do this. So this is something that we want to suggest to young, young people help them write their goals. And it's not just something that they're just gonna write at random. They wanna prepare those SMART goals that we talk about a lot, okay? And you can talk with them through the goals. So a student or a young person or someone you know will say, okay, I want to be an engineer. Okay, great. Um, how do you think we're going to achieve this? What are the steps that we're going to do to achieve this? Because each student and each person is so unique. And so you want to have that one-on-one -on -one goal setting conversation with them. This goal is about you. It is not about your parents. It is not about your neighbor. It is not about your classmates. The goal is about you based on your own skills, passion, and competence. And then you help them to prepare that goal. And I like when we prepare those vision boards so they can have it somewhere, always reminding them that this is where I'm going. This is what I want to achieve. And in addition to having those goals, we have to take a call to action. What are the skills that you need in order to pursue or achieve this goal? Maybe you're... 
your 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 you need to improve your scoring math. That's okay. How are we gonna do that? Is it does it mean that we're needing to study for an extra hour each day? Does it mean that we need to get a tutor? What is it that the skills that you need and we are gonna go ahead and develop those skills? Um, I always like to remind that skills are things that we develop. A lot of times we think that a skill is something that you already have, but you can learn anything. Our brain is wired for you to learn. And so you can develop the skills that you need in order to pursue anything that you want in this life. And of course, exploring career options. I always do magic three. So we can pick one career. That one is your favorite, no problem, but have two backups. Um, it can be in the similar field, but what are the different options? So we don't just pick one and then we don't have a plan in case maybe it does not align, but this may be a better fit. So you want to give them options exploring, not just singling in on one career. So I want to talk about the resources that I highly recommend. This is another resource that I love. It's Big Future Bank, the College Board. It's very US-based, but it's a comprehensive tool that provides resources for young people that helps them to find out what is it that they're good at, and it's also useful for adults. So it's amazing, amazing and it's a one-stop shop for everything that you need. Another resource are resources that I can provide. So first, um, last year, this time, I wrote and published, um, well, last year, I published the book, but I wrote this book, The High Schooler's Guide to College and Career Planning. And when I wrote the book, I wanted to make sure that it was a tool that would be useful to all students, regardless of where you are in the world, regardless of the school that you're attending, regardless of the country that you wanted to study in. It's a step-by-step -step guide because like we said, the co college and college, career and college programs in most schools, they're not very personalized. And so I wanted to provide this resource, having worked in the US and here in China, I noticed that this is a resource that was present in the schools that I have. And even in my own school, that is something I provide for each of my grade 12 students. When they're leaving, there's a binder that they have prepared. And this binder is the blueprint for them to be ready for post-secondary life. So I ensure that everyone has a college that they're gonna attend, a program that they want to pursue, and so you want to give them something that they can leave, not just with their high school diploma, but what am I going to do with this diploma? And you provide that for students. And that is what inspired my book. The process of preparing the book, I made sure that it had certain features because teens feel very overwhelmed about this. They do not have the language to share, but this is how they're feeling. What do I do? Where do I go? And sometimes it may come across to a parent or even their teachers if they don't care. Like they don't have any plans for, the, for themselves. They don't want to do anything, but they're feeling very overwhelmed. And so I wanted to give them a comprehensive guide to take them through. So it walks them through um, where do you see yourself in the future? Where do you want to study? Um, how do you prepare your college applications? And of course, those final steps, which involves tools that they can use to gain scholarships. And then I made sure that it was friendly. So it had engaging exercise, worksheets, and make sure that the tone was appropriate for young persons. So it's approachable and it's an encouraging tone that helps them to know that they can achieve anything that they want as long as they put the work in. And so this is the second resource that I want to recommend. And of course, um, myself as a career and um, college count consultant, I provide college advice to young people or persons in general. So if it is that you're thinking about a career change, you're not sure what to do, where to go, how to start, I'm able to provide you with those support that you need. I give academic advice in career counseling, coaching. Of course, I know that 
education is costly and I have benefited a lot from different scholarships. And so I believe that that's something that we can look at providing to persons. How do you get those scholarships and internships that offset the costs for university? So for example, I've been able to have a lot of schooling, a lot of which have been supplemented. And these are resources that I myself reached out and was able to secure for myself. And I want to be able to do the same thing for everyone that I interact with and each of my clients that I work with when I'm providing these support and in terms of the, their career and the university or educational um, pursuits that they have in mind. Um, I know I'm doing short on time, so I'm kind of rushing. So these are some of the services that we offer here. I offer pre-application support. I help students with preparing their applications. I do not write anyone's application or letters, but I do provide that support. There is a joy from doing the labor. And so I will not rob anyone of that, but I do provide step-by-step -step guidance and support from the choosing your career to um, admission acceptance to securing your first job. And so these are the different services. I can share it in the chat later. I'll share a booklet in the chat later. And I wanna skip to the free resources that I have. Oh yeah, let's talk about the investment. I said I wanted to shift to change this word from cost to investment because it is an investment into your future. So in terms of costing or investment, pre-application support, the cost is there as along with the different application support programs. So what is it that we, I want you to do after this conversation? First, purchase the high schoolers guide to career and college planning and give it as a gift to a young person that you may know. Okay, give this gift to them. Then of course, recommend the services that we provide. And of course, if you have prepared a free resource, for anyone who is looking to change their career, but you're not sure, if you type change career in the chat and your email address, I will share this resource with you after this meeting. So lots of free resources that I wanna share. So you can type it in the chat with your email address. I will collect that and then I will send an email later with just a guide. I'm big on guides to let you know how is it that we're going to do that? Because changing career can be a little bit overwhelming. And then these are my prizes and surprises. So I want to give away two things today. I want to give away a copy of my book. And I also want to give away a free um, pre-application support package. So if there is enough time, I will just collect the names of the participants and then do a wheel and announce the winner shortly. And I think that summarizes my presentation. Thanks again, Jenny and the Motivate community for giving me a space to share my passion and joy with, with my community. Thanks again for this opportunity. In February, 2024, we embarked on a transformative journey in the heart of Bali, where minds were empowered, connections were built, and breakthroughs were achieved. Hey guys, we're here having the time of our life. The time of our life. It's a combination of learning new stuff and celebrating all the growth and the transformation we've had this year. As the sun set on our time in Bali, a new adventure awaits us in Chiang Mai, 2025. Hey, a couple of important things if you want to come down to get the most out of this. I ask everyone to make a shopping list before coming here. A shopping list. New behaviors, new beliefs, perhaps value systems, or maybe a whole new identity. So before everyone comes, they create a bit of a wish list, a bit of a shopping list. And while we're here, we make it happen. Now that pre-course, we actually include a lot of our like the training that we sell for thousands of dollars, we actually include that in a lot of our training. So when you come along, you're gonna get access to that and go through it and make this trip absolutely dynamite.
for you. Join us as we continue our journey of growth and transformation. Together, we thrive. See you in Chiang Mai.